yeah, I'll try to, I'll look up quilting and just attacking. Craig Conover, welcome. If you don't know, Craig is on the show Southern Charm on Bravo. Craig, thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Uh, I love I love my um, my assistant saw your channel first and showed it to me, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. So, oh, an- thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I have to tell you real quickly how I found out about you, how you got on my radar. I have a friend who's a TV producer here in Tampa, and she knows I so, and she's like, you've got to see this show Southern Charm. She said, there's a guy on it who's amazing and he does all this sewing. And she's like, and his girlfriend just doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> she's like, so you need to see, you need to see this guy, Craig. She's like, he's so cute. She's like, I love this guy. And she's like, he can come over. You know, she just, she loves the sewing and she thought you were awesome. So I checked out a bunch of your clips and I was like, this guy is really for real with the sewing. How did you start doing that? Yeah. And I apologize to everyone. I uh, lost my voice this weekend. It's been uh, we've been doing kind of visits for the last three weeks everywhere. And Shep and I have just been fighting and traveling together. So, <laughs> um, but I will try to be as articulate as possible, but in eighth grade, we were lucky enough that we still had home ex. So half the, half the year we cooked, learned how to cook and half the year we learned how to sew. So, and, um, you know, I had a workshop in my garage for when Naomi and I lived together and I had a huge garden that I loved. Um, and I had grow shelves inside but when I left, I had to leave all that behind. Um, and when I was going through the closing of my new home, I, and like gardening and building stuff were my outlets for kind of like my OCD or perfection. It was just like to get out of my own head. And, you know, I was also like dealing with, but I didn't have my distractions and, uh, or my outlets. So I had a sewing machine and I was like, man, I was like, I was like, I, I have to remember how to sew something. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I remember how to sew a pillow. And then, you know, after the first one, when you turn it right side out, um, you know, this sense of fulfillment from the, I guess it's, it was told by someone, it's this thrill of creation. And uh, I just started watching. I was staying at uh, my friend's house, um, you know, waiting, like I said, for the closing. And I just started watching YouTube videos and teaching myself more and more um techniques and it kind of just went from there and then i channeled all of my energy into sewing and now we're here that's amazing okay so we have to talk about how how you're portrayed on the show with the sewing i felt like a lot of the castmates like didn't really get it but you i mean i don't know i just thought it was cool to see someone in popular culture doing it especially a guy you still even in 2019 don't see a lot of males portrayed as doing things like that, but I think it's super cool that you're you're out there doing it. Yeah, I kind of, <clears throat> you know, I'm not scared to to be myself, and that was something that a positive that came from being bullied growing up was I just self validate in high school. And after you self validate, then you're just like, man, you know, like if you like yourself, then you just do what you want to do. And you know, if someone has a problem with that, then you know, you almost have empathy for them that. You know, they can't be themselves and do what actually makes them happy. And I think that, you know, a lot of the cast members struggle with societal norms and worrying about what people think. And it it kind of I, I kind of am just grateful and feel fortunate that, you know, I'm able to be myself. And, you know, I like sewing. I'm going to sew. I like gardening. So I garden. And I hope that, you know, I've gotten uh, the messages have started to come in. And there was a few before that, you know, I am kind of representing um, a figure that's not out there that much. Like, no. you know, like if you do something that's not like I have no problem calling myself weird and stuff like that, but I'm not calling other people weird. But there's no one out there that just embraces kind of or that's not shown on TV or to the masses. That's just like like it's cool to be different. Like that's where your proprietary value comes from, you know, on Shark Tank, if all the products were the same, none of them would sell. And so if you get to that point where you can just be yourself, you know, that's what I hope to encourage, you know, people that, you know, I'm not the only person that likes to sew, you know, like a lot of people do and you don't have to hide it from people and, or whatever your thing may be, um, you know, just, just do it. I, it's, it's hard to articulate, but that's kind of the, you know, hopefully yeah. I, can, I can help other people, you know, get to, you know, be comfortable in being themselves and, and embrace it. 
Do you, are you getting a lot of guys reaching out to you about the sewing? Like, hey, you know, I'm glad I'm not the only one out there. Like, are you getting a lot of feedback from viewers about it? Yeah, it's funny because I, I've i had more girls say that they were going to start sewing, but I've had more guys saying, like, I've been sewing since I was a little kid. Like, my grandmother taught me how to sew, and or my wife's, like, or a wife will be like, my husband loves sewing. She He makes all of our daughters, you know, costumes or son's Halloween costumes. And they're just like, we just never really, it's never been part of our conversation outside of the house because we didn't think anyone would relate. We just thought it was us. Um, and so it's kind of starting a conversation, which I don't know. I mean, I guess is necessary because, you know, at one point in time, I guess maybe, a, you know, a woman did a lot of the sewing because she was at home. I don't know. But, at, you know, at this point in time, I don't really think there's, you know, everyone can do everything or do whatever you're good at or whatever you like. So. Yeah, it is sort of strange to me that in, in this day and age, everyone's all about inclusivity. But like, I still felt like people still give a dude like weird looks if they do something that's not like traditional, you know, guy stuff. And I think that's interesting. Oh, that I, I was. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. But I think that's part of your original question. I was surprised by how much pushback I got. Like, I was so excited. So <clears throat> originally I wanted to start making clothes and, you know, being able to alter my own clothes because I'm kind of eccentric based and I wanted to like, you know, change the color of buttons and stuff like that. So I was really excited to get my sewing machine um, a few years ago. And this is, this is actually, you know, aired on TV. And I thought, you know, my ex would be excited. I, I actually, I didn't, I didn't think she would care. It's just like, if I'm excited about something, she used to be excited about it or whatever. And I'd be like, Hey, look, I got a sewing machine. Like I've been waiting for it for a week. And it was just like, why the hell do you want a sewing machine and all this negativity? And then, you know, if you, you know, fans would say it too. And again, I don't care, but it's interesting that people would care. You know, you're like, yeah, what? like who cares what you're doing? It's your life. And I, you know, and that's one thing about you that I thought was really cool is that you're very multifaceted. You're a lawyer. You, you work on houses, you own real estate, you do gardening. I mean, I feel like a lot of women should appreciate something like that about maybe it's just me. Apparently, I don't think I'm alone, though, but uh, yeah. I think a, I think a woman should appreciate a guy who can do a lot of different things, I guess. I don't yeah. know. So I was like, it got to a point where I was like, I mean, I think I'm pretty cool. Like, I feel like yeah. why is it bad that I want to sew like, you know, I and garden to do everything. And yeah, I, I just I like to be as good as, you know, as many things, you know, as possible that I like. And um, I just. I hope that I guess it, I I think it would there's multiple facets of life that this could apply to but I feel so bad for people that aren't able to be themselves or do what they want to do because you only live once you know yeah. and like don't waste your time being you know there's people out there that'll protect you and just be like hey man like not you know no not everyone cares like so hopefully you know a few people can see what we're doing and and embrace it Exactly. Well, for the record, my husband likes to sew too, and he does a lot of the same things you do. And honestly, I think it's pretty sexy. So I think there's a lot of women out there still that will. And I hope somewhere out there, there is a gal that will appreciate all of your, your know, talents, right? Craig. Oh, uh, apparently my friend, I said, do you have any questions that you would want me to ask Craig? She's like, will he marry me? And I was like, I don't, I don't know what the situation is, but, uh, no, but I, you know what? Like I designers are guy or apparently 70% of like, brands right now are guys who obviously are like they know how to sew because yeah, they, and they're clearly yeah they're clearly very talented at fashion so i don't see anything wrong with it i think it's really awesome um okay so let's talk about your sewing machines so like what what kind of so sew, what sewing machines do you use what do you like <clears throat> so i had i started with my first purchase was a two-in-one sewing and embroidering machine from brother that I got on Amazon for $299. And I just was fascinated by it. I thought it was awesome. I used to, I used to, when I got it, Naomi would always go to bed, but I wanted to embroider stuff. And obviously it's kind of loud. Yeah, it's kinda, yeah, it makes a little bit of noise. I would take a laundry basket. I would push go on like the embroidery machine and then take a laundry basket and put it over it and then throw blankets on it real quick and just <laughs> embroider stuff throughout the night, <laughs> trying to get better and better at it. 
And then I went to my local sewing store and she introduced me to Bernina's and, you know, it was pretty awesome how, you know, went from, you know, driving a nice, you know, a decent car to, you know, driving a sports car, which was, you know, really cool. And all of a sudden, as I was learning more advanced techniques and stuff like that, you know, it really helped things out. And uh, so I love my Bernina. Um, I still have my brother for embroidery stuff. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I just got an embroidery machine a few months ago and it's a game. It's totally a game changer. And by the way, I want to um, talk about that one clip where you went to Cameron's baby shower and you, I know you would, you would had some trouble with the bear and I, so on the reunion show, when you were talking about sewing in 2D and 3D, I totally got what you meant. Like, by the way, I was like, because I'm the same way. I feel like two-dimensional sewing for me is easier than anything that has a form. So I was watching, I was like, right on, man. And, but, and I could tell nobody on, nobody on that set really like understood what you were talking like, about. Yeah, and they all, and they're like hating on it. It's like, well, what are you like, dude, what did you Yeah, do? like, what are you doing at home? Like, are you doing anything useful? Honestly, or are you just binge watching Netflix? I don't know. That's one of my big pet peeves right now is if you're going to put like a, a template out there or like instructions on how to do it, then freaking like make it clear how to like explain <laughs> how to do it or make sure the template works or just go away and do something else. Because that was the most frustrating because I could have made, you know, a simple, you know, like form bear where it was just two, you know, the two basically same shape and you sewed it together, but I wanted to actually make, you know, I've kind of bit off more than I could chew, but I can follow directions really well. And as long as like, you know, there's a, I can watch you on the video or something like that. And this lady would just skip like three oh, steps. Geez. I'd be like, how did you get there? And, um, it was just, it was really challenging. So I still have not success. Well, oh, I haven't no. tried it, but um, so do you have any favorite pattern lines or any certain patterns that you really like doing over and over again or ones that you feel like are really right on when it comes to the instructions? Um, I, for some reason, this popped out in my head and was one of the first things I did was I made, cause I thought it was such a cool concept, a tooth fairy pillow and the, the template was spot on and it was right when I was starting and um, I made this, you know, little pillow that had a, a pocket in the front for your tooth and a pocket for the money. And that was, you know, because it was clearly explained to me, um, I just remember that being one of the first, I don't know, just first times looking something up and saying, I want to make that and then following the directions of making it. Um, but honestly, I, I just, I'll go to the store and just, pick a bunch of random stuff out and see what I put together. So um, I don't know if I have any favorite patterns or stuff. It's uh, it's I know you're, you're very into the pillows. So the pillows are, are kind of your jam, huh? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, yeah, no, I just, I like, I don't, I, I kind of just like it all. Um, yeah, no, I'm the same way. Like anything interesting, like you're like, that looks cool. Also, this look, have you tried quilting, by the way? No. I feel like you would love quilting if you That's got into it. People it is two dimensional. So it would be very <laughs> like, I feel like quilting is one of the easiest forms of sewing to start with, in my opinion. Like, it, like, I feel like the clothes is hard for me, but I think the quilting is, is it, it allows you to be really creative. You can do a lot of different types of piecing, but it's also pretty like straightforward, I guess. I feel like you, if you tried making a quilt, I think you would really fall in yeah, love. Yeah, I'll with have it. to. Maybe tonight I'll, oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try to, I'll look up quilting and just attack it. Cause like I said, that's kind of the, the thrill is as long as someone's there to teach me or whatever, which YouTube's great for, um, you know, I, I'm down for whatever. So like how to fold a fitted sheet, you can watch a YouTube video and then now be one Man, of like, I still can't do it after watching those videos. Even oh, after yeah. watching it, I'm like, what what did they just do? It still I don't know. takes about five times watching it, and then yeah. one done, and you're like, oh wow, I'm Martin. so okay. So from eighth grade to now, did you see yourself as an adult being someone who who did sewing, or is that? <clears throat> no, I started as I thought I was gonna be a chef. So I I loved cooking, and I would go home after practice every day, and um, there was a small TV in the bathroom that we had this 
jacuzzi pool back in the day and i would after icing i would get in the tub and i would watch emerald lagasse every night and that's how i learned to cook uh and out and brown on good eats and so i always thought i wanted to be a chef until i realized that the lifestyle of a chef was not for me and that i would like yeah. to make my my husband actually is a chef, so I can attest to that. It's pretty it's pretty crazy world out there. So, um, you're you're better off with the lawyering and sewing, <laughs> I think. Well, and then um, I had always had ideas um, for design, but I didn't think I would be the one putting it together. Um, but then when I once I started to do it, I loved it. And you know, I, there's just so many different directions you can go in. I'm, I'm working on a line of kitchen aprons right now for the restaurants we uh, grew up working in, and it's called Soto Concepts in Delaware, and they're James Beard winners. And my friends and my brother and everyone grew up working with them, and they have a bunch of restaurants. And they're like, Craig, like, screw, you know, wearing a napkin, basically just a white kitchen apron. They're like, we want you to make us like some cool designer aprons to rock in the kitchen. And so, you know, like, nice. it's just it's you know, you can't really. It's always a surprise what you'll be knowing next. And so will there be a Craig fashion line? Is that going to be, do you think that could be a possibility? <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. And so I wanted to kind of start slow because, you know, this is all new to me. You know, if it's not just me selling out of my house, it's all, you know, new to me. And um, now that, you know, it took about six months to get this going. And now that I've seen it, um, you know, hopefully, you know, our opportunities continue to expand. I would love to do, um, you know, I, I make a lot of uh, betting um, when I was kind of going through this process. Um, not ready to start doing that commercially yet, but, you know, like that's that's one thing. And then, you know, curtains and hopefully this will become, you know, um, basically um, then like a housewares or, you know, kind of just um a lifestyle brand, but that's awesome. So I, I was checking out your website. I saw you had a lot of merch for people who sew, like you've got the fun t-shirts, like the what's wrong with my sewing. And this is my resting stitch face. Um, so it sounds like you want to expand the product line a lot. Now people had questions. They wanted to know if you personally sewed the pillows for sale. <laughs> so I have a bunch of originals and what we're going to do with that is I'm starting a nonprofit side to the company. <clears throat> what we hope to do is somehow use the scraps of our pillows and stuff like that to put together um, blankets or quilts for, you know, homeless, you know, specifically, I don't think a ho like homeless veterans should be a word. Um, yeah. I no, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And so we have some clinics here that I hope to start doing some pro bono stuff for, but um, th through that nonprofit side, I get to do a lot of the fun, you know, unique, crazy creations that I have. Um, and I will be giving them away through that. Um, and also through Sewing Down South, we'll have some giveaways. Um, now, the pillows, I found someone in North Carolina that I went in and sewed with them and kind of observed and made sure that it's the exact same process I go through and the quality. But, you know, after the amount of orders that I had when I came back from the Bahamas last fall, it was either, you know, one percent of these people would ever get a pillow or yeah. you know everyone could so yeah, I that's to, the trade-off yeah isn't it? and that's so you will have an opportunity like through other things um to have ones that you know i you know i are strictly made by me but i had to bring in the help no that makes a lot and people don't understand like ever when you start sewing you get all these friends and family members be like can you make something for me yeah. and then they offer you some amount of money and it's like 10 bucks and you're like that's yeah, no, no, I got it. If you like what you like, you know, if you're going to do it right. So it's not like I'm going to throw it together real quick. Like if you do it, you're going to make it, you know, as perfect as it can be. Um, and it takes time. So what you know? Yeah, for sure. So what kind of sewing projects have you not done yet? Like sewing projects that you would love to do someday, but aren't quite there yet. Like what's your dream? Do you have any um, sewing I would, dreams? Yeah men's tops like Ooh. shirts or like a jacket um which i would have to master the 3d sewing first oh my gosh that is uh, yeah and I, I was just watching some classes last night on like couture sewing and i'm like Ugh, I, don't. I mean I, like, it looks difficult <laughs> and i'm like i don't know i think i you know i have an awesome lady here in charleston that's offered to teach me when i have time and i think going and spending some time with her would be great but i would love to be able to like some of the 
So the products that we have on the store right now are are pretty, you know, fundamental and just, you know, like I said, we're, you know, getting off the ground and testing this month before the show comes out. But what's going to be the products coming out in the next few weeks are, you know, we have like, like I have a different pattern stitch, you know, on the sleeves, like an X or whatever that, you know, is sewn in and like raised up. And I would love to be able to test these myself here, which I do try to, but it requires me taking a shirt I already have and messing with it instead of me being able to put together you know, a shirt. Like, I think it'd be great to be able to measure, you know, someone and like, you know, sell a cool jacket for or blazer. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the clothing is definitely my, you know, Achilles heel right now. And my, I view that as advanced. Um, yeah, no, other- so I do too. Like that to me is like on an, another level. Right. That's the next, yeah, that's the next, uh, the next world or next league is that stuff. What do you think you really rock at when it comes to sewing? Like, what do you think is your biggest strength as a, as a sewist? I think my perfectionism helps me make very like clean pro like, like the, like when I'm making a pillow and this is why I had some problems with the people that were helping me. Cause they were like, well, who cares if there's a French team in, inside or whatever? I was like, I do. Like yeah, I you do, I like, I will make it as, you know, close to perfect as possible, but then add, you know, some different threads somewhere so that it's still flawed and it's set in its essence. And that's where, that's where the whole idea came from was embracing these, you know, these differences, but you know, it's not going to fall apart on you and it'll never be good enough for me. And so I think that that's one of the reasons why I had to bring in help because it takes me, you know, hours to make a pillow, but you know, that attention to detail, I think is really, you know, move me forward. That's awesome that you're really committed to not just providing a product, but making sure it's a really good product and it's something that people really enjoy. Um, so, okay. So let's talk about your sewing space. So where are you currently doing most of your sewing? Um, let's see. Let's see. Is, it, is it on this porch? No, I, I would love, love to. That'd be a cool outdoor, um, outdoor sewing space. Because of this water damage, like I said. Oh my gosh. Through the oh, ceiling. that sucks. Yeah, well, oh it's, uh, it gives you the opportunity to build. Uh, so it's kind of, um, it's kind of, you know, All right, this is cool. We're getting a tour of the house, man. Basically the front of my, so I got, um, so I have this like room basically, and we have this table that raises up and down, which is great because I like to do most things standing and my helper likes to sit, but you know, I, I like to work standing up. I was allowed to stand at my desk as a kid. I can't really sit still. Um, and then I have storage now upstairs, which has all the pillows I make and all our inserts and stuff. But then we have all these drawers of fabrics and, um, my helper just ordered those on, um, Ikea. And I think that's awesome. What a cool room. Yeah. It came together. Well, this was one of the, the junk rooms last year on the show, which, just, which again, everyone crushed me for. And I'm like, you guys do realize that in the span of like a month, we like <laughs> my ex and I went from like moving into a house that that was the plan to like me having to buy a new house and then move everything over here. And then we started filming like two days after I moved in. So I was like, Yes, of course, the house isn't put together yet, but it's all right, year- man. I lived without kitchen counters for a year. Like you do what you got to Like you do what you got to do, you know, especially See, that, if you're fixing up a place like it's going to look like crap for a while. Like that's just that, how it is that you and your husband like to do that together because I would love I think that would be really fun to do with someone because obviously anything you enjoy is fun to do with someone. But if someone was down to go live somewhere you know, for a little bit or yeah. like <laughs> get into it with you. Like, I think, I think that would be a blast. Well, in full disclosure, he does 95% of the work. So I can't take credit for like, I'm definitely like the least talented person in the relationship, but he taught me how to cook so clean and do all like the domestic stuff, which is kind of sad. But he like, again, we do, we've just been finding these houses that are, we try to find houses that need a lot of work but are kind of undervalued, which is, which is tricky right now. But I mean, I think a lot of people have to understand, like, if you want to do that, it's the house is going to be pretty yeah. crazy looking in the beginning and you got to be able to live with that. It's definitely, I, <coughs> when I 
first started, I thought I was going to be on that scale, but I did not have a picture. I couldn't, I didn't have the right um, kind of uh, representation in my head uh, of what that was going to be like, because when Cameron was showing me, I was like, no, I don't want turnkey. I want to be able to do it myself. Yeah. But to do it right, yes, when you walk into those houses, it is a lot worse than you picture in your head in the beginning. Like you, you think you're just going to be making like, you know, a house fancier, but in reality, no, you have to. Yeah, find you're doing it. And I, I saw you had some videos where you talk about like water damage and doing other types of stuff like that. So it seems like you do have a really pretty good foundation with with knowing about home structures and and just knowing about like the problems that that can happen. Like, my, how do you, how do you know all this stuff? Because I'm just amazed. I was I have a it was a good formula um, of a childhood. And I think I was fortunate, but my dad, um, he started a water restoration and smoke damage company uh, when I was born. When my parents got married, I guess so, yeah, like a year before I was born, and it was kind of he was working at serve pro or something. And he was like, well, I can do this on my own. So he started his own company. And so now it's kind of a rival to serve pro in the Northeast. So I grew up, um, at going to water damages and smoke damages with my dad, um, and tearing houses out. And so I know pretty much every aspect possible of demo. Um, I can dissemble a house very well, but the put back side of the company, didn't come until I left for college. So I've had to learn, you know, the finishing and construction on my own um, for the most part. But, you know, I was around construction and demolition my whole life. And that's kind of how, you know, I, I know the inner workings of the house. And um, but there's a ton more, you know, to learn. And I also need to find the confidence to like be my own contractor almost. Like, yeah. I'm, it's funny because some things in life, you know, I'm a great leader at, but when it comes to things like that, I like to be told like, here's the steps. Like I said, I like instruction. So here's the steps. And it's like, I know how to do it, but just tell me what I should do first and then second and then third. So it's definitely challenging, but if you get an opportunity to do it, it's fun. And I think you're a good testament to someone that is one, not afraid to trying something you haven't tried before and learning how to do things. But also I think I think there's this whole and I think there's a generational change where people are realizing just working the nine to five isn't going to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. And clearly you are someone who's doing a lot more to to get to get to a place that that, you know, you can retire, you know, you can retire and live a good life. And I think it's really I don't know, I, I felt like your castmates didn't appreciate that as much as, as I was like, this is really cool. He owns real estate. He does all this other stuff. So I don't know. I think it's a good, it's a, I think you're serving as a really good figure to, to young people to show yeah. them <clears throat> and you I, gotta do, you gotta do more, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, and <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I never, uh, so I hated being told what to do growing up. And the worst answer I would, you could ever give me is cause I, cause I said so, cause I was a why guy. I want to know why. And like, if something doesn't have a purpose purpose, then that it doesn't exist to me. That's stupid. Like I'm an efficiency person. And I also like to make my own mind up and decisions for myself. And just because someone decided this is how you're supposed to live your life a hundred years ago does not fly with me. Like that's yeah. great. That person wanted to do it, but like, no, like that's not his decision to make for me. And I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing just because everyone else is doing it. And I know it's tough because you have to, you know, I was fortunate that the show came along and, but, and I know you have to make a living you know, and you have to get there. But I mean, I loved bartending because, you know, it, it was four to 10 and then I had, you know, my day and all this other stuff. And, you know, I, I would probably go back to bartending before I worked a nine to five, but that's why also in law, I'd probably have my own practice and do like consulting. Sorry, the point is sometimes I ramble, which works for TV. Hey, but no, this works. I, I talk a lot too. So yeah, it it's works. basically like it's, I would, I finally had this moment where I was listening to all these tapes and podcasts and watching other people do it. This is how I got into the real estate. And I was like, well, why not me? Because these people were no different than me. And it, because in your head, in my head, I was just like, well, one day I'll do that. One day I'll do that. And I'm like, well, 
you have to like reach a certain point before you can just start buying places and stuff like that. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. These people are kind of like my age and doing the same. So I finally just kind of stepped, you know, over the line of my comfort zone and just did it. And honestly, with property, I mean, this isn't expert advice or legal advice. It's just you, you have the equity in the home. And as long like, as long as you don't need that money to eat the next day, like you're going to be yeah. okay. Um, and I don't know, just stepping out of the norm. I mean, in a careful, like I still hedge everything I do, but yeah, you got to step, you're not going to get, you're going to work that nine to five until, you know, you're 50 or 60. And you finally think that you got to the financial point that you wanted and you're not going to be able to spend it or do anything with it. And, you know, it's, um, yeah, if you're lucky enough to not do that. Yeah, but this, it's, there's so many points of one, but I think your statement was the cleanest way to say it. It's just this generation is a whole new work style. And yeah, stuff. I think they're starting to realize that, that people want to live. I think these people realize they want to live life on their own terms yeah. and not just be like a cubicle worker or something, which exactly. I was for a long time. And you know what? I was really miserable. <laughs> so well, really miserable. allows you to work from... <laughs> you know, wherever. And it's, you know, and if they trust you to do your job and not monitor you, then, yeah. you know, let these people work wherever. Like my roommate, you know, set up an office in his room. Um, and he works from home. I mean, he travels like 150 days a year, but you know, he, he's a way better employee or, the, or employee than me. Like he works his ass off, but that's why he has now taken the steps to, he joined one of those or he bought one of those, like we buy houses for cash franchises mm -hmm. and him and his, and our other buddy have been doing that for six months because he's try he can't he can't do the you know working for a big you know corporation anymore and so he's trying to get out on his own too so um, you know the space is definitely there yeah for, for no it really is so I, I do want to ask what um all right so the sewing industry it still does seem like they market a lot to women particularly like retired women or like maybe like more of like the, the moms at home kind of crowd. What do you have any thoughts on how that industry can capture more younger sewers and maybe more guys? Like <coughs> it does seem like a lot of guys still kind of don't feel like it's for them. Yeah. I mean that's well, taking it out of schools definitely isn't the answer, but yeah. um, I, that's kind of where this idea came from in this, you know, niche mom. And you know, to go along with my, you know, sewing, like I would go to the store or something like that. Everything had a, a utility purpose. Like everything for sale was, you know, because you needed it or or like there wasn't anything cool or there wasn't a lifestyle behind it and or anything fun. And we're trying to basically yeah, make sewing cool again, essentially. Yeah. Um, and you know it's this hobby that a lot of people, there's not gear for them, you know, to represent them or anything like that. And, you know, if we can bring, you know, a little more, you know, fun or youth into it, I think that's the goal, but I, I don't have, you know, that, that answer. I think yet. you could be the key. I think Craig, you could be one of the keys to this, you know, a lot of like, seriously, if you did like a sewing with Craig retreat, do you know how many people would probably sign up for it? Oh, that would probably, be you could probably fill up like a whole stadium or something, man. And I don't know if you're aware of this. I'd love to do that. Yeah, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's uh, there's merch about you on Etsy. Really? Like people are selling um, T-shirts that say like "Let Craig Sew" or like you know like uh, like there's a few things where that make homages to you in the sewing. So I think it's kind of you know funny. You could be kind of like a like a like a lightning pole for the sewing world. Yeah, I think, I mean, which I think would be cool. Uh, a retreat or something that would be I, I would love to do that and <clears throat> i love interacting with people and someone said yesterday that i should do a twitch channel because i didn't know oh my really oh yes and a youtube if you don't have a youtube channel man i think you could do like a sewing down south channel or something yeah, and then why where it's like hanging out with you and talking about sewing and and kind of just just kind of just as a way to represent you know just somebody a little bit different who's yeah. sewing i think accessibility is one thing that People were like, well, yeah, I'd love to sew. Or maybe where they were watching, they'd be like, that'd be cool. You know, that's cool as heck. Like, I don't care what people think. I want to sew too. 
but I don't have a sewing machine. Yeah, they don't have the equipment. They don't have the space. They don't but know what to do. On Amazon, uh, the barrier of entry wasn't as high, you know, as I thought for, you know, like for 200 bucks, you can get a machine that works. Um, and, you know, you can ask for it for Christmas, your birthday or something. And um, I love the freedom that comes along with having a sewing machine because you literally can make whatever you want. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Like there's no rules once you have the machine. And I, so maybe, you know, that, you know, overcoming that challenge would be great. Um, but yeah, it is a cool sense of freedom to have. Yeah. Like you can literally, like if you can dream it up in your head, you can like, you can do it. You're not just limited to what's in the store. And I think that would have an appeal towards like generation Z, just having something that's like special, having something that that's just for them. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and I was asking my husband, I was like, what do you think could get more guys to sew? And he, he's very honest for, he's like, if they could get women. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe like just kind of rolling my head, rolling around in my head. I do feel like maybe some sort of singles events. I don't know, like something where, you know, where young, you know, young people could kind of get together, hang out and do something fun. I don't know. And if like, honestly, if there were a bunch of dudes there, you know, women would show up for sure. Yeah. And the same thing with guys. It's like ladies night at a bar, you know, it's true. So, I don't know. I feel like that could be like a something that the sewing industry could tap into or somebody could tap into to try to get to try to get sewing into kind of like a hipper, you know, area here. You know, that that confidence is attractive. Obviously, if you're doing it, you clearly don't care what anyone you know, thinks. But yeah, some sort of challenge yeah you just have to like figure out how to get people i mean people are interested but now we got to show that it's like a thing that they can do it's a possibility and then just go from there but yeah that's funny that i've never thought about those things <laughs> yeah and I, I said because i said honey what do you think we get more guys like women <laughs> and i was like okay yeah just don't watch you know our show and the reaction that you know, my girlfriend had. Oh, no. You know what, though? I feel like she's in the rare. I don't know. I kind of feel like she's, she might be in the minority there. I think a lot of women would find it cool. I don't know. A hundred percent. That was just an inner <laughs> unhappiness that I was doing whatever I wanted. And at the time, I don't think she was. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I think it's great. Like, yeah, no one cares. It's great. You know, it's cool. And... It's so I don't know what your relationship status is currently, but I, are you interested in maybe other finding other people in your life to sew with, or do you have like a circle of friends you do it with or? Yeah, I just, I've, I have like, I'm now breaking into this world that I'm so isolated and like no one else I knew knew how to sew other than like, you know, the older ladies at like, you know, the sew shop or whatever. And yes, it is fun. Like when I'll meet, like even at the golf tournament this weekend, you know, every once in a while, someone be like, Oh, like I love to sew too. And then you can talk about it. So yeah, I, I definitely enjoy people, you know, meeting people that, you know, have the same hobbies and, and, you know, enjoy that because it's just, like I said, it's a very kind of isolated thing now that people tend to do by themselves you know, and no one really hangs out with them while they're doing it. And, uh, and yeah, to make it more of a social thing would be great. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. But yes, I do think, Craig, I think you need to find a woman who appreciate, who at least appreciates the sewing, but at best she's super into it too. Cause as you know, sewing is not a hobby. Like it's like, once you get into it, it's not just like you know, like I like to read books, like sewing is like an obsession. Yeah. Exactly. And if someone doesn't share that same passion, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. I think that would be a good, a good match for you. Somebody who, who appreciates that. And the girls, uh, sense, um, I mean, they either didn't care at all. Like it had no, they were like, all right, yeah. cool. That has no, very like, great. Like, that's awesome. Like I would love a pillow or they thought it was really cool. Um, I haven't met anyone that also sewed, but I definitely have not met anyone else on earth other than my ex <laughs> that had a negative opinion of me wanting to sew. Like that is, other than that, everyone really liked it and like giving them, you know, something that you may has been, you know, they love that. Um, and, you know, now we're doing cases for a cause or whatever, you know, we're making um, pillowcases for, you know, the children's hospitals and, 
Um, yeah, there's really no negative side to like making things for people. No. So I, no, but, but yes, I would say I don't know if you're single or not, but I think I think there's a lot of ladies out there who do so, um, who would who would probably uh, who would probably be interested. So I don't think you're gonna have a problem in that department. Well, that's good. Yeah, I guess I'm. I'll go to see what the sewing dating scene is. Now. I don't. They need like maybe they need like an app for sewing people oh, or yeah. something. I don't know. Next or like creatives. You know, you don't want to. You. I don't know. Like, because it seems like. Again, like if you meet someone and they don't and they just kind of, you know, probably someone who would not be a good match for someone like you is someone who just kind of lays around and watches TV all day or something like yeah. that probably wouldn't work out. Yeah. Or doesn't see the value yeah. you know, that comes, you know, with it, you know, and, um, you know, not even, you know, not monetarily, but just, you know, it's it, yeah, I don't it's it's great. Like there's no bad side to me. So if someone doesn't like it, then, yes, we're probably very different. Um but yeah, there. I mean, craft the craft is crafts are making a huge comeback. Um, you know, they have the show on TV now, like the craft com or crafting competition show with the people from Parks and Rec. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. I know. I was, but yeah, I was really jazzed. So, how did the production team for this show like? Did they? did they want to work in the sewing? Like, cause I know they probably maybe talked to you guys about storylines or something, but how did the sewing kind of become a part of your character? <clears throat> Honestly, you know, sometimes they are concerned if um, you're just doing something to push like a product or something like, yeah. you know, that's not something that they like to do. They want to follow your, you know, your real life and be transparent and not, you know, be an Instagram ad basically. And fortunately for me, this has been such an ongoing thing that it's, it is who I am at this point that, you know, the last two seasons or whatnot <clears throat> prior to this was, it was a, it was a source of fighting between Naomi and I, it was a distraction to like, you know, studying for the bar or whatnot. And then, you know, I, it's something that I continued to t tell people that I, I really like doing and I was going to try to make, a living out of it um and the fact that it didn't come to fruition in either of those seasons meant that i clearly wasn't just like making this up to yeah. sell something that was going to go live and then so the fact that it took three years um i think they were excited for me that it was finally happening because essentially and you know you'll you'll see you know this season is I finally found my escape, which down, was down in the Bahamas, and I cleared my head and found myself again and was coming back with this new kind of, amb like, newfound ambition that I had years ago. Well, it, you know what I'm... do this, and then... I'm envisioning, like, a sew with Craig retreat in the Bahamas. That's what I'm picturing. That would be awesome, and they have famous, famous ladies down there that make bags out of sailing material and uh like the sail shop in Ma man of war they there's four ladies that still use the foot machines and they're like very famous bags that they make like like luggage and it's incredible um so yeah there's definitely uh there's these small little pockets everywhere that seem to pop up that you don't know about until you get into the sewing world that's awesome. Well, I'm so glad to see someone who's oh, someone else who's really passionate about sewing and and you're in a, such a great position to maybe try to get this world a little more exposure, which I think is really cool. Um, so, OK, so let's talk about Sewing Down South. Um, so the website SewingDownSouth.com. And what where, where else do you want people to try to find you or follow you? <clears throat> I mean, honestly, SewingDownSouth.com and you can use it your phone or your computer. Um, we're going to be releasing products, new products every Thursday morning. Um, and that's, I'm just as excited about you guys, cause I'll design this stuff and I want to show everyone, but you know, there's a way to do it essentially. And some of my business managers are, you know, they're like, Craig, you can't just throw everything out at once. You gotta like, you know, relax. Um, and they, so if you follow our Instagram, sewing down South, that's where we'll be doing a lot of giveaways and a lot of Instagram lives. Um, and you know my instagram ca conover but so if you use sewing report then you know 
we'll give you, you know, 10% off or whatever for All right, this. rock on. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, so and people right seemed really people seemed really excited about the product, especially since it it was kind of a good like it was good merch for people who sew, you know, like, you know, like the fun sayings or like the on Sundays we sew. I think it's cool that you're doing stuff for people who right. are sewing. And, and you know, we just want to make like, you know, sew squad like cool and and uh, I didn't want to do it too based on the show because I wanted people that didn't watch the show to still be able to like it and still be able to buy their grandmother like a toad or, you know, their wife or their daughter or whoever. Or see, I'm still saying like women forms or guys being able to like rock our hats or shirts. And uh, yeah, so we're just trying to make it, you know, a brand in its own. And um, I, I mean, I love it. I've started to see people with, you know, with hats on and that's a really neat feeling when they walk by and you know, they're wearing your hat, you don't even know who they are. And, um, you know, if you do get your merchandise, definitely post, you know, a picture of it and tag it and we'll put you on the, Inst you know, oh, we'll for put sure. you, on the Instagram. You, you know, I'm going to be doing that, Craig. I know, you know we, mailed yours, we mailed yours yesterday. Oh, wow. Uh, Maybe I'll see if I can wrong. get my husband to wear something too. He likes hats a lot. So if there's a hat in there, um, yeah. I'll, I'll get him to wear the hat. Yeah. I'd sign, I was able to, I sent yours from, uh, my house. So there's a oh. you know, and stuff. So, um, that is, that is so sweet of you. And I'm so, I'm so glad we connected because I've been following you for a while. And I just think it's really, it's just so cool that you just are, are kind of just doing you and you, and you know, whatever, you know, like the reunion show, I got to say though, I thought it was hilarious when, when Andy Cohen asked and he's like, why am I, you're like, why am I even friends with these people? <laughs> yeah. You like that. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I was like, amen, man. I, I totally, I don't know. And I really like, I felt like I, cause I felt kind of weird about, cause there weren't a lot of people like me represented in sewing either. So that's why I started the channel. Like, I felt like a lot of the women who are represented in like the blogger world, they're like these like picture perfect magazine people or something. And I'm clearly not that. So I wanted to have a more relatable place for people to just be themselves and not feel like they have to look like they're in a magazine every day because I look like, <clears throat> partially homeless most times. So I wanted it to be more of like, a you know, this is, you know, and I also the weird thing, too, is that I didn't run into a lot of other women who did it who had like a professional job. Like a lot of them are like the blogs would say, like, you know, I started sewing while my kids were napping. Again, I think motherhood is wonderful, but that's just not something I could personally relate to. So if you don't see yourself represented in in a certain niche it can be a little difficult to, to feel like and, you're a part of it. Yeah. And that's, and usually when I'm like, when I get into it, you know, I'll go down like a rabbit hole and just start making stuff. I mean, everything's a mess. And like, you know, I'm usually in like a surfing, like tank top or something different. It's just not someone that was like, Craig, can you like, cause I was, I had like a, you know, backwards hat on and I like something just hit me and I was designing something and like a tank top and stuff. And she's like, well, maybe like look a little more professional. I was like, but this is just, no, that's, like, who, that's how you yeah. sew. Yeah. yeah. This is me. So why um, change, yeah. Why change it? That's what you're actually doing. I don't know. But and, I think it's, I think the pictures are awesome and you're in your, you always seem so excited about it. And like, I could tell you were for real. I'm like, this guy really isn't just sewing. He's not pretending. It's not like for the show. Like this is a legit thing. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's, you know, the, the coolest or the happiest thing you can find is, you know, getting to do something that you really like. And I, and I do, do love actually, in all honestly, the law. And I, I would have loved being an attorney and now I'm able to help people out for free, which is great. It's just, you know, the reason I'm not practicing for profit isn't because I didn't like it. Um, it's just, it, it doesn't fit in my life right now. But it's okay to like more than one thing. And that's what I didn't couldn't really fathom why, you know, other people on the show were like, you gotta pick one thing to stick to it. And I was like, that's not me. Like I no. like a lot of different stuff. Like, and I want to do as many things as possible. And I think that's totally fine. No, well, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this. I've been kind of watching a bunch of clips of you and reading, and I was like, this guy is really pretty and amazing person. Oh, so man. I'm so excited to get to talk to you and learn all about the sewing and have you ever been to QuiltCon? I think you would enjoy going. It's a okay. convention, and um, and they alternate cities. But I think I think you would have a good time there. It's modern quilts. Where is so it? It's it, sometimes it's in Pasadena, and sometimes it's in like another city. I forgot. Let me look it up. Let's see where it is in twenty twenty. So they just had it this year, I think in 
I believe it was in Pasadena. Okay. Oh, 2020 is in Austin, Texas. Cool. I think you would enjoy it. It's a lot of modern, like re, you'd get a lot of inspiration there and meet some really cool people. And, and you can kind of see what the quilting, you know, uh, it was sort of what the quilting community is like. But I, I really think if you make a quilt, man, you're going to be, it's it's going to be a whole new game. You're going to be like, this is amazing. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look in that tonight because I did use it. a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I used in one of the crazy like quilting machines in our sewing shop. Oh, the like, long arm ones? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So, it costs as much as a car, but I was yeah, like, like whatever. Like, else. Yeah, they're like thirty grand. You could be like a lot. You could do like a long art. I I don't know. I kind of feel like if you opened up some sort of sewing studio where people could just sort of hang out, I see that's cool. Yeah, that, that would, would be, be awesome. Space and like you know we could you know be working from there, but there's space for other people to come and and do it. That's a good idea too. You're yeah, you be, great ideas. Hey, and I'm, and I'm telling you, YouTube man. If or like a lot Craig sewing live camera where you just set up like a live camera in your sewing room and let people watch you sew, people would probably watch that. I, and yeah, I'm fine with that. So yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to try it out. I um, I think so. I'm excited for you. I think there's so much you can do in this space that's not being done, and I think it's awesome to see what you're doing already. So again, I really appreciate all this. Is there anything else you want to share or um, let people know? I'm trying to think. I should pro I probably should. I'm just happy now that I have something to share because before, you know, I I pulled the trigger with the company. It would just be like, well, one day you can, you know, you can find the pillows. But uh, no, I mean, I'm, you know, just, you know, the support is great. And, you know, you can put that code on your on your site, you know, whatever you want it to be, if, you know, and uh, and honestly, just look forward to especially when the show comes out a lot more being launched this is kind of just like a slow testing thing because what i want to do is every pillow will have a different charity and so you kind of like you can pick who you're donating to through which pillow you pick and stuff like that so there's definitely some aspects that you know we're gonna add so i'm excited yay and that's awesome and i saw you had done some hurricane relief right in the past yeah that was pretty wild oh my gosh Hurricane Florence, um, when I came back from the Bahamas, I was here and it's kind of just like what we were saying about working the nine to five. And I was watching all, all these, <clears throat> you know, private citizens grabbing their boats and going up. And I was like, man, one day I want to do that. Like, I, I love that. And I was on my couch and I was like, wait, Florida, like North Carolina is only like three hours away. And so there's no reason for me not to go. So I went to um, Costco and filled up my car with as much stuff as possible and just drove and you know on my way i was put in touch with like a fast water rescue team and than i've ever been with friendland at midnight got to you know met up with this team that had airboats and everything and um the dam was breaking and you know we went out and basically picked up a bunch of people i don't like use the word save but it was wild yeah, that's crazy groups and we get the dispatch because you know rescue personnel wasn't allowed in after you know the state of emergency was declared unless it was the coast guard or the national guard or whatever so it was pretty wild and it was thrilling and um it was eye-opening and it was a, a heck of an experience and you know i think it's something that i get a chance to do again this year hopefully there's not any more hurricanes but there will be and um it was great wow well that just goes to show you too if you want to help someone you can just go out and help people like you don't need to wait for you don't, you don't need to wait for something you don't wait for like a 5k run or something you can just right. go out and do something well is there anything you don't like you like so many is there anything you don't like doing or you're not good at uh basketball basketball oh that's right i hate i i'm not good at basketball either so it's at it. and yeah that that's not not for me um but something, it would be good to have something that I wanted to be better at. That's, I feel like a good thing for people to have. Um, let's see. I don't know. I have to think about that. That's a good thing. Not saying that there's not a million things to be better at. I just don't know which, which one I want to focus on. I guess quilting at this point and getting out of my comfort zone with sewing. And if I have three hours to sew, instead of doing what I already know how to do, maybe, you know, it's frustrating it is you know try and start learning the couture side so yeah no that's true yeah and it, you always kind of want to level up and you're always it's always that's the thing i like about sewing is that no matter how much you do or how much you learn there's always more 
So it's something where your journey just is ongoing. Yeah, like when the clothes you make don't look like costumes anymore, but they yeah. actually look like clothes. Like that would be an ultimate, like, you know, level to get to. I think you're going to get there, Craig. I do. I, I believe in you, man. So, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking all this time, especially since you lost your voice and your house had some damage. Like you're, yeah, yeah. And, and I would like to extend an invitation. If you're ever in the Tampa area, let me know. And you're welcome to come. So here at the sewing report headquarters, yeah, yeah, like, we got to collaborate. That would be cool. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and if you like there. kayaking, my husband is obsessed. Okay, sweet. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'll, uh, we'll do something when the yeah. show comes out, we'll, we'll catch up on here again. And then yeah, if I'm down there, that would be fun to set Yeah, reach deal. out anytime. If, yes, if you're in Florida, I don't get out of the house much or out of the state, but if you are here for something, let me know and I would you're welcome to come out, come hang out here and we can we can make some stuff. All right, awesome. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Craig. All yeah, right, guys. I and guys, make sure to follow Craig on all of his social media accounts. I'm gonna link them below. Again, Craig Conover from in season six of Southern Charmed is coming out. In very soon. So it's coming out in just a few weeks. So May 15th. All right. Awesome. Well, again, Craig, thank you so much. Of course. Nice meeting you, Jennifer. All right. You too.